Welcome to Chemistry with Dr. Xi. In this video, I will discuss alkenes and fractional distillation of crude oil as a source of alkene. So what are alkenes? Alkenes are saturated hydrocarbons, and because they are hydrocarbons, they represent that group of aromatic compounds which only contain carbon and hydrogen. They are saturated because they contain only single bond between all of their atoms. There is no double bond, so there are uh, they have only single bonds. Each carbon atom is, funded, is bonded to four other atoms, each of which is either a carbon or a hydrogen. These are some examples of the alkanes like methane, ethane, and pentane. The general formula of alkane is CnH2n plus 2. We could also have cycloalkanes, and cycloalkanes are also saturated hydrocarbons, but they differ from the open chain alkanes that they contain, um, that they, uh, the carbon consists of a ring of carbon atoms, and the, uh, each carbon atom is connected with uh, two hydrogens. For example, we have the cyclohexane here, which, as you can see, it consists of six carbon atoms uh, forming a ring, and each carbon atom has two hydrogens attached to it. The um, general formula for cycloalkane is CnH2n. So cycloalkane are represented as um, functional group isomers to alkenes because they have the same general formula like alkene, but they have a different functional group because alkene, the function group, is the double bond. How to name alkenes as a general rule? So for, alkene, for alkenes, the name consists of the prefix, which refers to the number of carbon atom in the chain. And we add the prefix, so meth, eth, uh, prop, uh, but, and so on, depending on the number of the carbon atom. And then the suffix, which is ain, which refers to alkene. For, cyclo for cycloalkanes, we just add the prefix cyclo before we add the prefix which uh, refers to the number of carbon atoms. So, for example, when we have a cyclic structure with six carbon atoms or cyclic alkane with six carbon atoms, this is called cyclohexane. Remember that even cycloalkane are saturated hydrocarbons, even though they have uh, the uh, ring structure, but they don't have any double bond. They only have single bonds. The physical properties of alkane, we know that alkanes represent one of the homology series, and homology series, they um, have gradual variation in their physical properties. So for alkanes, as the chain increases at the number of carbon atoms and the chain increases, there is an increase in the boiling point. For branched alkane, the branched alkane will have lower boiling points compared to the open chain alkane with the same carbon atom. Atom. Why do we see this um, property? Why the um, branched alkane have lower boiling points than the open chain alkane? So alkane, alkanes are nonpolar, so there is no ionic interaction. They don't have any dipole-dipole interaction because there is no dipole, and there is no dipole-induced dipole interaction because all the bonds are between either between carbon and carbon or carbon and hydrogen, and the, there is no difference in the electronegativity between the carbon and the hydrogen. So the only type of interaction is induced dipole-induced dipole interaction, which we call it London dispersion interaction or Van der Waals interaction. So what happens is that there is a center of negativity and positive charge is identical for all alkanes. Once they come approaching each other, one alkane or one bond will induce um, a dipole in the other one. So there is an induced dipole in one of the bond on the neighboring one. So once this induced dipole is created, then it will induce the opposite dipole in the neighboring one. So there is a now an interaction between induced dipole, induced dipole uh, for the uh, neighboring 
bond. So this kind of interaction is called van der Waals interaction, and this is quite um, uh, weak forces of interaction. This is why alkanes have quite low boiling points. And the lower ones of the alkane, as you can see, have, are gases like methane, ethane. They are gases, they have very low boiling points. So why um, do we see that branched alkanes have lower boiling points compared to the um, open chain ones with the same carbon atoms? So London dispersion um, uh, forces will increase with the area with which the molecule interact with each other, which means that the more the atoms we have, the larger the molecule, then that means there will be more of the London dispersion forces or more of the van der Waals forces. This is why there is an increase in the boiling points. However, the unbranched alkane molecules have larger surface area compared to the branched one. And this is why branched one, because they have lower surface area, there is lower of the London dispersion for interaction or lower of the van der Waals forces between the molecules. So they have lower boiling points. So crude oil is the source where we can find the different alkanes. So the main source of alkanes is crude oil. Crude oil in itself is not useful. So we need to separate the different fractions of crude oil in order to use them because they have a wide variety of alkanes that range from uh, one carbon atom like methane and uh, two carbon atom like ethane up to more than 50 carbon atoms. So to separate the different fractions of the crude oil, we use the fractional distillation. Fractional distillation in the fraction distillation unit, we have a furnace and we have a fractionating column. The crude oil is fed into the furnace and the oil is heated inside the furnace at a temperature of 350 degrees. Then the different components or the different fractions or the uh, oil starts to evaporate and it condenses at a number of different temperatures. So as you go up in the fractionating column, the temperature will decrease. So we start off at 340 until the top we have 40 degrees Celsius. So at the very top, you're going to have the gases, which are going to be um, uh, removed from the top of the fractionating columns. And these gases are the ones, the fractions that have uh, from one carbon atom to up to four carbon atoms. So at each temperature, the uh, fractions that are going to be condensing and can be collected will have a similar number of carbon atoms because they're going to have similar boiling points. So the first fraction at the top will be the gases, carbon atoms from one to four. And these are the LPG or the liquefied petroleum gases that, used, that are used at home. And then at 40 degrees, we're going to have the petrol or gasoline. Carbon atoms between five and 12 will be collected uh, as a fraction from uh, this part. And this is used in, uh, as petrol. And then at 110 degrees, the second fraction or the third fraction will be the naphtha, which has a carbon atom. The chain will have uh, between 7 and 14 carbon atoms. And this is this, the naphtha is purified and used in petrochemicals. And then at 180 degrees, we have the kerosene or paraffin, carbon atoms between 11 and 15, and these are used for jet fuel. And then we have the diesel at 250 degrees or the gas oil, carbon atoms between 15 and 19, and this is used as diesel oil. And then at 340, we have the mineral oils, which are used as lubricant. The number of carbon atoms in the chain for this fraction is between 20 and 30. At the bottom of the fractionating column, there is the residue, the fraction that did not vaporize, and these are collected at the bottom of the fractionating column. They include fuel oil, wax, and bitumen. The number of carbon atoms ranges between over 30 up to more than 50 carbon atoms. So as we go down from the uh, fractionating column, the uh, boiling points and the viscosity will increase. We start off at the top with the gases and at the bottom there are the solid residues. So most of the components that we separate using fractional distillation are 
the um, large long chain hydrocarbons, which are less useful than the short chain one. So the short chain one are the more useful one, the one that we use more frequently than the longer chain one. To increase the supply of the short chain hydrocarbon, what we do is that we um, use a process called cracking. So cracking is the process which is used to break down the longer chain hydrocarbon to make shorter chain hydrocarbon. So how is uh, how does cracking work? Cracking is basically breaking down of the longer chain hydrocarbon into shorter chain more useful one. So first the hydrocarbons longer chain one are heated and uh, vaporized and then there are two types of cracking. The first one is the catalytic cracking. In catalytic cracking the vaporized hydrocarbons are passed over a hot catalyst and this catalyst is called the zeolite catalyst or hydrated aluminosilicate. And this is done at a slightly uh, high pressure or at a slight pressure, not very high and high temperature around 450 degrees uh, Celsius. The most of the products that come out from the catalytic cracking are aromatic hydrocarbons and motor fuels. The use of the catalyst uh, in this process will cut the expenses or cut the cost of the process of cracking because the catalyst will allow the use of lower temperature and lower pressure com compared to the thermal cracking, which is the second type of uh, cracking. So um, we know that the catalyst will lower the activation energy for the process or for the decomposition of the uh, or breaking of the uh, long chain hydrocarbons and that allows us to use lower temperature and pressure compared to the other type which is the thermal cracking. So for thermal cracking the vapors of the hydrocarbons are mixed with steam and they are heated uh, to a very high temperature. The temperature could reach up to 1000 degrees and also we use a very high pressure which can reach up to 70 atmosphere. So the thermal decomposition then will start. The thermal decomposition allows for breaking down of the longer chain hydrocarbon into shorter chain. In this process, it produces lots of alkenes and alkenes are used to make polymers. So the polymers like um, uh, polyethene is um, made from um, ethene and polymers have different uses in industry. So in cracking, you will have different products, as you have seen, depending on the process of the cracking, whether it's thermal cracking or whether it's uh, the uh, catalytic cracking. And also you're going to have different products depending on which hydrocarbons have been uh, used for the cracking or has been uh, broken down. But in general, when they give you the um, long chain hydrocarbon and the shorter chain ones, you should be able to balance the chemical equation for cracking. For example, if you give you a long chain hydrocarbon that will give you a shorter chain and alkenes, then you can find something like octane, which is uh, C8H18, um, an eight carbon um, hydrocarbon and eight carbon uh, alkane chain that will can break down to give you hexane with six carbon atoms C6H14 and ethene as an alkene with two carbon 